All right. So, so we're going to look at funding and what uh, kind of the different funding is available and, you know, why funding is set. And so some of the opportunities available and also some of the issues that surround uh, funding and kind of and the opportunities as well. So, so why funding? Funding opportunities support and develop uh, your music careers. Um, so there's lots of funding available and through different pots and a lot of them have kind of very um clear requirements about what they need and so that that might be about location it might be age it may be uh gender um uh it might be race and um so there's a lot of different areas which are, are covering music and opportunities um and they've changed quite a lot over the past few years and they've have become wider and i think uh hopefully more inclusive as well um so obviously here are some of the reasons so there's uh traditional funding for artists through record labels publishers and management so um so the funding to so talk about kind of funding and funding opportunities um so traditionally funding um if you were signed to kind of a publishing company or a record label they would give you an advance on your royalties um which although is funding it it, it is you do pay it back but via what's called it re they recoup the money via um via royalties before they pay you any any royalties at all uh and there's a lot of kind of issues around that and um, i'm not sure if you've read recently like fred dirtz has just taken universal to to court over what he feels is kind of systematic uh um systematic uh kind of um withholdings of royalties from universal so that so it was um so it's kind of the, it's not super transparent but it, it's there. i'm sure universal would argue it is transparent but that so that was kind of traditionally how the music uh um uh, funding kind of uh arrived to musicians they're now national and local funders that support projects and career development so and the difference between projects and career development that's uh um projects may be based on on kind of like a, a a thing that you're creating so it might be a performance it might be um a piece a, a piece of uh art with music in it it may be performance art it may be um some kind of experience experiential thing um and uh career development uh and is uh it tends to be more where you're looking to kind of fund maybe a release or um a marketing campaign and di so different funders will uh fund um different areas of that and then talent development programs can support develop and grow your music so talent talent development we'll look at some of those but you know this includes uh the likes of launchpad uh so um offering things like uh um uh um i'm looking for the word ment uh looking mentor mentoring programs um so uh i was part of a mentoring program called mastered uh which was kind of a a, a um a six-week business skills boot camp but then there's also talent development which is kind of a longer pro term program which is uh an ongoing relationship which may even help release in supporting music um and registering your music for rights and you know collecting royalties and generally more of a wraparound service as well uh, and they might they might also offer funding opportunities too so some advice on funding um i'll have some general thoughts at the end as well and um, some summary at the end but um so success often uh, depends on timing and project fit so um that so sometimes uh your i know sometimes these two can kind of co coalesce so uh, a project can um uh if if you're trying to get funding uh and under a certain political climate or there's um there are things that have become pertinent like politically or or even culturally uh and and you fit that can really help so for example um a theater company that i work with called fidget theater they got some funding for a show called football freddy which actually goes back on tour uh in a couple of weeks which i just did the sound design uh for and that um that kind of worked because they apply for funding around the time of uh the women's world cup so it kind of the 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 timing of that funding was was really well timed because it was about freddie's a um a young uh 
girl footballer who you know loves football and it's a great story and it kind of and it obviously fitted with that kind of wider narrative of uh inclusion for women's sport um and so and also it's about fitting with um fitting with the goals of the funders themselves so there's so um fund so for example uh arts council england have a a kind of um one of their goals what you call let's create which is about kind of engagement and wider kind of audience engagement um and so it, it has to tally with the funders themselves and about what they are trying to achieve through their pots of funding so cof, uh, competition for funds can often have a, a big impact so um uh, a lot of the reasons you get um uh, knocked back is because and literally it can sometimes just say other projects preferred um uh i think so for arts council england the kind of percentage is they they say it's around 15 percent at the moment success rate which is very small it's highly competitive and so those competitions can have a big impact on what you what you do that's not to say you won't be successful and that isn't to say that it is pointless because it isn't and actually you know i know plenty of projects that do get funded it might take a time it might take a few goes as well but um there is uh it is really really important to be aware that this is a kind of almost like a commitment when you when you start applying for funding you can have a great project but the time your time doesn't work or the objectives don't align with funders priorities as mentioned and you know and sometimes those timings don't uh don't add up if you have a plan you should be able to adapt it to different applications um so uh the the good thing is that um that some of the criteria a lot of times so when you're describing uh the project the project outline the aims and ambitions for the project there should you should be able to both um expand and uh retract that the amount of information you're putting in an application depending on that application but if it's solid and it's a good idea that really should be pretty adaptable um it says in risk man management in big letters and what that means is that um funders are very risk averse they are giving away public money um a lot of it's public money some of it some of it might be private so if it's if it's more like uh some like a um jimmy hessel uh foundation which is comes from like private money that's a different thing but when you're talking about um youth music or arts council england or some of the other projects these are public funded money this is money that's come from uh from the general public and therefore they are they are they are not wanting to just throw that money around and uh, at anyone so they are looking for people who have a really solid idea that maybe that some of the partners who are involved have um uh, experience of running projects um uh so that so it isn't just a whole bunch of people who are brand new to something there might be someone with some experience with running a kind of creative project with involved so either that be a, in the role of a kind of a, uh executive or project manager or producer um but kind of can ha, ha, is used to working with publicly funded money and the responsibilities that come with it uh so uh, lots of funders offer one-to-ones and webinars so something like this where they will go through the application process and and offer advice on kind of what uh kind of what they're looking for with an application this isn't necessarily cheat code but it certainly look will give you an eye on what what the, the kind of projects they're looking to fund and you know and that that is absolutely the basis and the start of everything you need to be doing when you start an application i should say that i um i've just literally uh i have a foot um an application at the moment with arts council england uh so, um which is the second time we've we've submitted it so um and i'm working with a really experienced team with some really great partners partners as well um and i'm you know i'm really really proud of it as an application but um it is, you know, and we got, and we were lucky enough to get some feedback the first time we rejected, which we were able to act on, and um, that's really useful. It's kind of that's really useful information to have, um, and it allows you to then strengthen your application and make sure that you go that you can put it back in. But it is a it is a process that I have been through, so I know, I know how how difficult that process can be. So um, national funders, uh, uh, which are kind of the ones we're going to look at for most of this evening, um, uh, include PRS Foundation. 
So the Performing Rights Society, uh, which is hopefully you guys know about, which is PRS is the collection agency for songwriters within the UK. And the um and this is the their their foundation that they use to help support emerging artists. Um help musicians UK, uh uh, which is one of the biggest music music charities in the country uh, and looks to help support professional musicians uh, along their career um, and it particularly helps as well uh, looks to support um, uh, musicians who might have struggled with mental health or other um, or other areas with or health related issues that have maybe stopped them from able to work and support them in, in times of crisis need but also they do offer development money as well for artists who are looking to further their career Arts Council England, who I already talked about, which is kind of the largest arts funding body, um, uh, they um, this so this is a public funded area, and it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see what, how affected they're going to be by the new administration. We were hoping that we would have uh, a government that were going to be more arts friendly. They've sort of been making some of the right noises. The concern is that they're also hollering cuts and. Um, those kind of things at the moment. And uh, unfortunately, the arts is easiest cut and Arts Council England la under, the, under the, uh, the last administration when they first got in in, in 2010, uh, the arts was actually took the biggest cuts. Uh, it's unknown to most people, uh, was cut by 60%. Um, uh, and because a lot of the work the arts do is invisible, um, it's not, and, and not very high profile, despite the fact that actually the creative industries for every pound that is spent brings two pounds back into the economy so even from an economic point of view it wasn't a particularly smart move but you know uh that is that was you know that was that past administration we're hoping we're going to have um a slightly more favorable view of the arts coming forward so that is kind of the publicly funded art sector and then there's youth music who obviously as the title says, it's looking to develop kind of younger audiences, um, so younger practitioners, um, and it, it's worth noting. By youth music in the past, uh, and they're they're really really, you know, good and very thoughtful charity hope you can all see me okay i'm saying my internet is unstable so apologies if there's any breakups there um, <clears throat> is there any funding opportunity for, uh, available for non-british residents or are these mainly uk nationals only i'll be honest i don't really know how that works um it is worth mentioning as well that like uh, as much as these spots of funding um so how it can work is that individuals can apply for funding so such so particularly like for my application that a group of us are put together and then also getting paid for by so you you can be involved with funding application and support funding applications but it, it can have what's called a lead artist on it so if even if that's the case so i don't know what the strict criteria is about kind of residency and it's and it probably changed from funders to funder and whether or not it's public funded or not i hope that answers your question all right so let's look at the prs foundation um, so, uh, so PRS Foundation are the UK's leading charitable funder for new music and talent development. So, as I mentioned, PRS Foundation all came out of uh, PRS for Music, which is the uh, the collection agency that collects on songwriting mechanicals for um, for uh, for uh, UK based songwriters. Um, uh, so, and they previously funded people like um, Little Sims, Alan Parks, Ghost Poet public broadcasting say years and years to name but a few and obviously these artists have gone on to have you know really uh really good and and significant careers um and you know little sims feels like they're you know currently kind of you know really ruining ruin the roost at the moment so you know that they they they've got a really a great track record of kind of sporting brilliant talent um so they have multiple funding pots to uh and support 
different artists. This isn't all of them, by the way. There are different different ones. And I will only focus on a kind of two or three because you know it'll take forever to go through all of them. But there, but here are some of them. So there's the the open fund, the PPL, momentum fund, the PPL, momentum accelerator fund, the hitmaker fund, women make music, hitmaker resonate, and the Daphne Aurum fund as well. And so these are some of the kind of funds available. And they do and the reason why they have so many is because they're trying to kind of um have focused pots of funding so some are kind of a, a wider and kind of open to a lot of people some are um are more uh are more focused um uh, pots of funding that are looking to kind of really maybe hit underrepresented either areas or or um or members of the community um so uh that's why there's so many and like you know so resonate for example kind of deals mainly with orchestral works uh, so they're looking at kind of supporting orchestral projects. Um, uh, women make music are for, uh, for women and non-binary um, artists. Um, kind of so, uh, w what is also known as unrepresented genders, uh, under um, underrepresented genders within uh, within music. Um, so really trying to kind of like making trying to essentially level the playing field as much as it possibly can through the through those uh, those funds. So the Open Music Fund, uh, which is uh, is up to five thousand pounds at the moment, so they're off, um, uh, th th it's probably worth saying that a lot of these um, are coming to a close for the for twenty twenty four at the moment, just because um, it's sort of obviously reaching the end of the calendar year. Um, I am also wondering whether or not, because of the change administration, they are looking to kind of just see how the land is lying before they announce the next dates. Um, it is just worth saying as well, really worth keeping an eye on on um, these websites because and they have a list of of all the all the opening and deadline dates so and it's really worth just going and checking and having a read so i i you know i made sure i was kind of uh, up to date with what was going on and I had to scoot through this morning just to kind of make sure that i knew what was happening there and yeah and it looked like a lot of them were kind of like closing up for the year but that doesn't mean they're not going to reopen it just means they haven't announced the next round yet and they do announce rounds fairly regularly so um uh the open music fund is kind of uh, is an, is they're more they're kind of the open like if the music is good now again that's very difficult that's subjective but i think they're kind of definitely looking for a certain standard a certain quality and then um uh how uh how that is getting out to audiences how you plan to reach new audiences what is your so essentially it's looking for strategy um so a wider strategy in in um audience development and those, as a, as you can see successful artists include young fathers uh, Afroduche, uh, Jadip Singh, and Ruth Lyon. So, and they're just a name, but a few. And there's there's a big list. And you can see if you go again, if you go to the website, it's really worth looking at and seeing who they who they funded and the kind of music. But um, uh, so that's their kind of much kind of they're wide open. Again, very competitive because it is it's very it's very broad, and therefore a lot of people are applying for it. There's the PRS PPL Momentum Fund, which is anything from five to 15,000. The next deadline for that is the 4th of November. So it is open at the moment. Um, so this is judged on whether or not you have, have a sizable impact on an artist's career, plus whether the artist has a team to take, take uh, in place to take advantage. So what that means is that it's, that an artist isn't just kind of, it's got a really clear strategy that there is a team, maybe sort of either management or support structure around them. Maybe there's some they're looking to employ some PR. There's it's it's a there's a, a, a very clear plan of action that is by giving this funding is going to help uh, noticeably uh, build the the uh, build the profile of an artist. Because between because five and fifteen k, why why in the grand scheme doesn't sound like a lot. That is um, that could be spent on multiple uh PR pro PR campaigns or one big PR campaign. I mean, I'd be very worried about anyone wanting to spend 15 grand on a single PR campaign, especially for an independent artist. But like, but you know, you're looking at, you know, you're so you you've you've cho you've got a team in place or you're looking to do some kind of specialist pressing or there is there is some very clear strategy behind it. Um 
uh, and and there is and there isn't yeah uh, that is that sort of the area that I kind of that makes sense to me that you, that it's not just hey, we're going to release something see how it goes there's like we're doing this for these reasons with uh, we believe these things because we've seen these outcomes from these other artists who've done similar things so there's a real sense of research as well gone into it so successful artists include Maskins, uh Life Eagles Fizzy Blood Hawkeyes Menace Beach so these are all artists from from the kind of West Yorkshire area who've who've uh, been supported, and you know, and I also know that a lot of these artists had things like management in place, who, um, or certainly so, sort of like some a team outside of the band who were definitely sort of helping support releases. There's the PRS uh, PRS PPL Momentum Fund Accelerator Fund. Uh, this actually isn't, I haven't, didn't see it on the list uh, of um, open or in fact closed projects uh, this morning. However, it's still on the website in terms of, of, of a kind of funding pot. So I'm wondering whether or not again they're looking at that. This is, um, this is, was, has been up to £5,000. And, um, and uh, this has been specifically ring faints for Yorkshire artists. Um, uh, they, I know that this is, this set was generally set up to support artists outside the London area. Um, there is definitely a London bias within within uh, within the music uh, industry. I'm really aware that uh, you know part of the reason we have EMI North here in Leeds is because there was an understanding that essentially there was no that EMI had not signed an artist outside the M25 uh, in the in, for the past few years, and they were really concerned about the that the, they basically weren't they weren't signing anyone from the north of England. So this was uh, this was a really important um, step. So this sort of ties in with that kind of strategy, that wider strategy within the music industry to stop being so London centric and try and dip into the kind of wide talent pools that are available within within the uh, uh, the UK and which in itself helps build build infrastructure and, and kind of a stronger network. Um, and hopefully a stronger music industry nationally and is less reliant on on london which in itself is becoming really inaccessible for for uh, for creatives because it's so expensive to live there so less and less creatives are living in london which means actually signing people in london is uh, uh, is becoming more difficult um so um this will help support our, our artists get to the next level uh, um so successful artists have include english teacher downtown uh, K2, Noya Rayo, Team Picture, Simeon Walker, my neighbour, um, <laughs> uh, Chidi uh, Iroka, Tree Boy and Ark and Harkin, um, again, sort of some really great uh, Wesley, you know, West Yorkshire artists, not Wesley's artists, although some of them are. Um, uh, yeah, and, you know, and again, sort of these are people who, you know, are around about in these music and are really like, and, you know, and it actually might be really worth if you know another strong idea is to if you are thinking about funding and applying funding is to reach out to some some of the people who've got funding like local artists and ask to speak to them ask ask for their advice about funding applications people have you've been through it are usually really happy to kind of talk through like kind of best practice so it is worth re possibly reaching out to some of these you know and they might you know be able to give you give you um some advice um i hope that makes sense so any questions so far by the way Okay, I will continue. So, uh, PRS Foundation Women Make Music. Um, so grants of up to five thousand pounds. Again, there's um, there's nothing open at the moment, but I, that's to say it won't be in the future. So this is for women, trans, and non-binary uh, songwriters, music creators for a different stage of their career. So this is looking sport, as I mentioned, un un underrepresented uh, genders within the music industry. Um, which is uh, which has largely been industry uh, industry wide in terms of uh, kind of um, uh, looking to support uh, sort of the, uh, move away from the bias kind of white middle class men who who have largely sort of been the kind of recipient of a lot of the kind of grace and favour of the music industry. Um, and I obviously say that with you know due understanding that I am one of those you know, one of those people um and uh looking to kind of widen pool and um uh and I, I, um 
they are uh, they didn't really have a criteria about the music. It just said they were a musician in different stages of the career. Again, I assume it's artists who've got a strategy and a plan and how are looking to kind of uh, with, with a wider understanding of what they're trying to do. So rather than just like, I want to put some music out, there's a strategy bit where they're looking to take their music and whether or not it's a release strategy or it's a touring strategy or it's, you know, both. Um, there's a PR campaign, whatever it might be, there's 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 a kind of um, a, yeah, a, a, an understanding of what is, what is trying to be achieved down the road. And uh, again, another list, I'm not going to go through uh, me reading them. You can read them yourself. And I only embarrass myself and no one needs that. All right. So moving on to Help Musicians UK. Um, so Help Musicians UK is a leading UK charity for musicians of all genres, uh, start, um, from starting out through to retirement. Um, uh, Help Musicians UK is a really um, uh, uh, is a really well established and well thought of um, uh, uh, um, organisation, and and I know people who've been involved with helping run it and and support it, and they're really great people, like really brilliant, passionate people who are passionate about supporting grassroots music as well. Um, and I know that they've also gone out of their way to kind of support artists who have struggled uh, either with their, their their health or their mental health um, and have kind of supported artists to kind of uh, with with kind of with supporting their income or supporting their way back to work. Um, on that, they do have kind of a number of target points worth looking at, at kind of there's there's a number of opportunities to, um, so next level is up to 3000 plus additional support. So that'll, that'll probably be in like things like, um, mentoring schemes. Uh, and then also they have a fast track, which is essentially, uh, it says launching on the 6th of May. So that's when it was launched. Um, so the fast, fast track, uh, is, um, is essentially they, the way they describe it is that there might be an opportunity that's coming up that's going to cost some money and they will help towards it. So that might be something like a songwriting camp that you'd like to go to or, um, yeah, or there's some equipment that you need uh, to do a project um, uh, that you would, you know, you you think you're going to benefit, it's going to benefit your, free, benefit your career and, but you can't, but there isn't the funds there and, you know, you need, some money quite quickly so these are very quick fire which is quite unique within the uh, they any funding tends to be fairly arduous they are, can be quite long and difficult processes um uh sometimes a bit torturous uh um I, and and yeah be warned about that not all of them but some of them um so this is very much kind of trying to make something that's kind of quick and easy that they can make quick decisions on and obviously they can be a little take more risk with some when they're giving out kind of 500 pounds rather than like 3000 pounds which is you know it we, so it's less of a risk for them um I'm, I'm sure it you know due diligence absolutely paid and they you know they assess things you know hence why help musicians are well so well considered but they will be you know they they're probably it's probably an easier fund to get i would argue or certainly apply for um the three thousand pounds is obviously looking to kind of again sort of much like the prs looking to develop and and uh and grow your career uh and uh by kind of some significant investment Interesting enough, and what is more difficult is, and I think this is kind of going to be a barrier for a lot of people. That's um, uh, for both, you need to have forty percent of your income from music for the past two years. So you have to prove that you've been earning forty percent of your income from music. Uh, how? What they mean by music? I'm assuming that's that is a combination of live, um, from recording income, from maybe uh, from uh, writing royalties, uh, all that kind of stuff. So kind of. Um, uh it's yeah and that that's quite a high figure if i'm really honest i think that's that's that could be a real block for people who are looking to get uh to get that kind of money i would i have to say that um as someone who's been in the music industry for a while and you know like it feels like if you're earning 40 percent of your income from me from from uh from music then how, I don't know how, I mean, obviously any money is always really welcome, but how significant £3,000 will be, I suppose if you're looking to, to buy new equipment or something like that, or yeah, absolutely kind of upgrade your 
you know upgrade or whatever it is then then it could be really helpful um uh would you class working for a rehearsal studios as as uh income for music rob that's a really good question i really don't know if i'm really I, I mean i would argue yeah you're absolutely involved with the ecosystem of music what does like you know i'm assuming when you're working for a rehearsal studio you're also doing things like looking after the music technology and the upkeep of things like amps and mics and you know like uh, I would absolutely argue that musician and tuition will be as well. Yeah, I I think again that I would argue that you're teaching music and therefore it is music. How would that not be not income? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I I don't hold that. Again, this is probably why you're, it's worth digging deeper into criteria, contacting them and asking them as well. Going, you know, you know, they're. I have to say, help musician from what I know um, is they're quite. They're pretty, you know, pretty responsive to uh, to questions and things like that. So, you know, uh, I I would I would absolutely get in contact and, and ask them about kind of eligibility. But they'll probably have a, some strong Q and A's on that as well in on the website. Uh, these are really good questions. Yeah, cool, excellent, thanks, Rob. Um, but these are really good questions, and like, like I say, please feel free to ask me as many as possible. It means that I also don't have to just you know yabber on, which is always good. I always like input. Um, all right, any other questions about help musicians? Uh, really, yeah, but I know that they have helped people in the past. Um, uh, and I know, I know some of the people who have done work for them, and and I really have a lot of time and respect for them. Um, so yeah, definitely worth a a look so youth music um is a national charity uh to support making music for children and young people between the ages of 0 and 25 what i like about this is that i think 25 is a really good age because it, when it's not to 18 it's really i think that's really difficult because actually the toughest time i think is 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 kind of post-university time so that kind of like 21 to 25 ages you know you're still young a lot of time you're still fairly directionless <laughs> so you know uh it is it is really useful uh yeah you're 28 so um but um but there are um, numerous resources um uh and obviously kind of uh things that are, are there and it's probably worth checking out the website there will be downloaded downloadable resources on there for you to kind of use so although it's not kind of targeted you i still think you know things like creating brand how to be an artist manager beginners course to hosting virtual festivals all those kind of things are really really useful um and how to build a career in music they also um uh they have the grants up to two and a half thousand to make ideas happen. So ages between eight and 25. So including creative, uh, artistic, new enterprise platforms to support new talent. And they have lots of funding available. So if you're, you know, actually, if you are experienced working with young people, I know you, if you are doing tutoring and things like that, or you work in an organization that you think would benefit. So, you know, you work in a rehearsal studio and you want to engage young people, then, you know, this might be a really good way for you to kind of like up your ante in terms of what, what you're doing at the rehearsal studio and, and you know, help with an application that, for a project that you can run. Um, because obviously within these projects, you can build in a, uh, a fee for your, for your work, a fee for your wage. So it's not always just about uh, um, funding, funding that a project that is your project sometimes it's about making building a project that's going to support other people but he's going to build in work for yourself which is you know um always available um one that isn't on here actually is the uh there is a kind of um a youth engagement fund that um tracy braben has set up um who is the mayor of west yorkshire which a friend of mine just got um to run a music-based uh, music music based workshops for young people uh production workshops um and i think it's up to five thousand pounds and again so they're they're they have their money that they're looking to allocate to help with engaging young people in positive ways um i can't remember the exact uh the exact name of the fund but it's worth looking at so probably going if you do a search for funding tracy brebin 
uh, Brave in uh, Mayor of West Yorkshire. That's a really, uh, really useful tool. I know someone who's just got that grant as well. So again, to help support the young people. If you are under uh, under the age of um, 25, however, this is uh, this obviously is a way for you to help build your career. And it's you know, a significant amount of money, two and a half thousand pounds at that age, um, and obviously help with create a new enterprise. So if you can start a label, or you're starting looking to um, uh, create a promotions company or you know whatever it might be um um and uh they also they also i know they also um offer kind of ways into the industry and things like that so yeah really really good charity and and, and support some really great projects any questions as before i move on no okay cool all right then. i'm sort of ripping through these Arts Council England, ah, Arts Council England. Now, this I have a lot to say about because I've just been through this project. So they offer different um, uh, kind of two main fundings parts that will be most useful you guys. Um, so they do lots of things like, you know, they do long term funding for organisations, what are called portfolio organisations. So these are long term organisations that are funded by the Arts Council. Um, uh, um, I receive kind of year, like I think and I think it's and they have to reapply I think it's every three or five years for the to be a portfolio organization. But outside that, they offer project grants and they offer develop your uh, creative practice so DYCP grants. Um, it says it's uh, supports individuals and organizations with public funding and donations from lot national lottery uh, to deliver. Let's create strategy as I mentioned before to make sure that everyone's creativity is given the chance to flourish and we, uh, and we all have access to a remarkable range of high quality cultural experiences. Isn't that lovely? Um, so they are, that sort of their, um, that is their focus essentially is to, to give access, wider access to, to creative engagement, create a greater cultural engagement. And so that's, a, that's the strategy. They they have just restructured their their um their funding uh and uh and sort of and how much things uh, ha within the past year, um and they have also restructured their application form. It is mildly less arduous than it was. I say mildly, uh because it is just that. Um, so project grants, four projects. So for example, my the project I've just put in for is. Um, I am looking to do what is called an R and D research and development um, phase of uh, writing a musical. So I am looking to write a musical that is uh, based here in Leeds. I'm looking to work with a number of practitioners to help develop my idea, um, including another writer, including a uh, music collaborator, including a movement director. Um, I have partnerships with. Uh, I've I've been lucky enough to be supported by the Lee's Playhouse and by uh, Lee's Museums. Um, it's a hip hop. It's going to be a hip hop musical. Uh, so Lee's hip hop, hip hop historian site are also supporting it as well. So numerous partners uh, on that. So so the reason why I've got partners and I'll talk talk you through is the reason why I've, I've built these partnerships is because by having things like the Playhouse, by mu having Leeds galleries and museums involved um by having lisa pop historian society it shows uh that i'm engaging with the community which is the lisa pop historian society um i uh, and i understand the kind of cultural uh, nature of kind of locally about what it's worth i have support from from uh the kind of the biggest local theater there is in in, in terms of so it, it shows that it has support at the highest level um museums and galleries as well means that i'm kind of trying to reach a wider cultural audience it also means it shows that i am my i am a, not an overt risk to the funders because I am supported by people they are funded and they know uh, make good projects and make good on their projects. So this tends to be useful for use uh, for, for touring projects in terms of for music uh, or interactive live events, installations, critical pieces of work. So what they what it means is that they aren't probably going to fund an album that that's more like PRS or um, the PRS 
foundation's job they're more likely to fund something that's going to have a wider cultural engagement so we have a wider cultural offering so be a tour or something that's going to be um uh that's maybe multidisciplinary, so dance and music um uh and has kind of so it's 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 in it's sort of having a wider cultural reach of this going i'm going to release an indie album i'm trying to sell to this set amount of people now they still want you to target your audience and they still want you to know who your audience is that's really important and how you're going to engage in them but um but yeah that's kind of the plan so what about workshops would they fund something like that or festivals um it depends on the type of festival uh uh and i think it would fund workshops if it was in parallel with other things so whether that's performance or a um uh some kind of uh art artistic piece does that make sense so it was a wider thing so if it was a bunch of workshops that was leading to a performance then maybe they would uh so it's so again what you're doing is creating something that then will then be out to 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 kind of so you so it's not just the workshops themselves it has an end thing which is then sharing which has a wider cultural impact if that makes sense they really like stuff that's non-traditional so what i mean by that is taking things outside traditional venues what are called harder to reach audiences so things that maybe going to talk communities things things of that nature stuff that may be thinking slightly outside outside the box um uh uh it says here that uh it's a very involved application form it is an awful application form. i'm going to be really honest i'm dyslexic um and i pretty much like my spelling's terrible and my short-term memory's terrible but i'm and i've always said i don't really like forms very much um but i've never really like ever like felt the kind of like an overwhelming sort of sense of, of dyslexia until I opened the uh, Arts Council England project grants form, which I have never felt so dyslexic. I'm not even, I'm not being glib. I honestly, that's how I felt. I could not fathom it. I found it, uh, I found it really overwhelming if I'm really, really honest. Um, um, Yes, I, th yes. Uh, so you make a really good point, Gabriella. I really want to make sure I'm clear on that is they do support, they have access, they do have access funding. Um, so you can have uh, support and they offer that for a wide range of things. Like, so even people like who have maybe have reduced time because they are uh, parenting, they're full-time parents or that they um, have uh, additional needs so uh, or, or um le learning uh le additional learning needs like myself or uh, you know adhd or you know like yeah they absolutely are offering more and more of that so yes i do not want you to put i don't want to put anyone off um i was really lucky because my brilliant friend ruth cooper who i've been working with ruth um basically extracted what because what a lot of what it is is the questions and then with it a, a description past all that stuff they're actually quite clear reasonable questions so yeah um they're not yeah i don't and yeah it's a really involved form it's a big form questions and, and that can be quite difficult sometimes it feels like you're sort of um uh you're trying to find a narrative that they want to hear and that can be difficult and uh, and uh, i certainly wouldn't want to feel like you know i wouldn't want to say um encourage people to kind of make stuff up because you shouldn't um and i think that you will be found out if that's the case um uh but they but there it can be sometimes really overwhelming uh and i'm i'm you know i really yeah that's that's kind of point but it can be done and there is access for it so it's always open so you can always apply for for funding um so it says turnaround uh um about nine week turnaround 
so yeah that that can that can vary so we actually got a really quick turn up for the first we it was actually in, we got it within um six weeks but it's tends to be about six to eight weeks they're saying at the moment uh um over if you're going for the over 30 so there's two pots of funding there's the under 30k which is um under 30,000 so as you can see that's why they're arduous as well because they're it's public funding they and they're asking you to to basically justify why you should get that kind of kind of money and then over 30,000 for bigger projects um I don't know what that's up to if I'm really honest but um that could be that could be up to 14 weeks turn around um uh worth considering the right time to apply for if it's for a commercial artist um yeah and it's a difficult one with commerciality because um they i suppose it can sometimes hamper you where, where with with prs what you're trying to do is prove your commercial worth and kind of uh demonstrate your sort of like viability within the marketplace really what arts council are doing is that if you kind of they want things that are going to be accessed and successful but they aren't necessarily looking if you, they think you can just make loads of money by pulling a handle then they're kind of like well you can do that yourself um so it's a bit of an odd one and i always felt i still feel music and particularly recorded music doesn't really always fit with arts council england grants it does for performance and it tends to be or, or projects music projects so uh, i know that um so hope and social uh who are a leeds based act they did a tour called the tour of infinite possibilities and they got a massive amount of funding for that so they toured like a stage and you know massive rig and they did workshops which led to performances which is kind of answer your questions like and they they toured it around and it was during the whole um tour tour de france um uh uh time and they were sort of yeah and it was so it was a massive cultural offering and they got a really sizable um grant to do it and it was you know it was a huge successful project engaged thousands of people uh and so it was really successful um so that's but that very much i think was would sum up the kind of project they were if they were looking to release an album probably not so yeah it's a it's an interesting one any questions on that one so yeah that's the project grant it's just what i've applied for uh and i'm currently awaiting awaiting the response with bated breath uh um yeah and such is the way uh oh that's uh no problem at all um gabriel it's uh i hope this is useful um okay dycp uh so develop your creative practice um these are really really great things actually i really like dycps i think they're really uh, i think they're really artist friendly um i know loads of people who've got them i know and i have been considering applying for them so for developing this basically developing your creative work and that that can so my friend a friend of mine got his he's a piano he's a singer songwriter a guy called rick neal um and rick is very much kind of like uh you know comes from that kind of more traditional piano based music and that's what he was used to using in his live performances and he his develop his developing developing your greatest practice was essentially how to integrate technology and and um uh wider production values within his creative practice so like not just his me and a piano so both working on his live performances and his and his own music and and actually is really you know he now performs with a lot uh, like a uh, uh is it a launch pad he might be a launch pad is it launch pad could be which is hilarious like so you know one of the kind of pad based uh technologies which he which triggers sounds from ableton so he works well on those things now uh when he performs live he's very much he's i think he's his production and his kind of recording skills have really kind of upped in a, in a massive way um 
it is about developing new work, not just realization of a project. So it's yeah. So and actually also it's about developing new skills within a project as well. So a friend of mine who's a writer got uh, one for to help write a novel. So um, uh, I had another friend who basically want to develop their practice as an audio recording artist uh, and and they they've been very much been working workshops they're also visually impaired so it's about kind of developing that work uh, for someone who's visually impaired um uh i had another friend again who was looking to kind of uh wanted to develop their recording skills they were um uh, an education-based practitioner who work within the creative industry, creative arts, but wanting to develop as, so to be able to record things and edit and create things like podcasts within using music technology. Um, you tend to use them to, um, to engage other creatives as well. So um, they're a really nice way of paying other people as well. So it's, so the fun, you, I think it's up to you get to keep up to sixty percent of the money, but another forty percent is so to pay yourself for developing your practice, which is great. So you get to pay yourself, but then kind of the other the other forty percent should be used to to engage with other creative professionals to pay for their time to help you learn new skills, which is brilliant. Which is you know like so I have been paid by by people that I know and really like, and I got to kind of do workshops with them for a day on different things, um, uh, kind of looking at kind of either editing or how to use a DAW, you know, real kind of sometimes real kind of like kind of entry level stuff, but it was really great and it was really fun to do and and to kind of open people's worlds up creatively. Um, so it's about, so it's kind of acknowledged as well that people need to be paid. To, it's it's difficult to create, develop your, your creative practice and you should be paid. So it's not just, I wanna do a project and I need some money. It won't you won't get paid for that. It's I want to develop a set of new skills or um and uh these are the areas that I'd like to work in. Um uh so it's something that I'm definitely considering. I know as is uh my wife as well, uh, because we both work in the creative industries, uh we're both freelance well times. Um <laughs> and uh yeah, we're both considering uh kind of looking to apply for those because you know we are both kind of we are both still developing as creatives even though you know we're also you know not spring chickens anymore you know and i think you know and it's about it's about understanding that you're on a creative journey and yeah i really recommend them so it's 10 grand uh it's a wide range of uh local eyes um time is crucial so be clear of the idea that you're that you're developing and that's the thing is don't go with some wishy-washy be really clear about what you're aiming to develop the area you're looking to to develop in um uh, so could you use uh, use this uh sorry this is a question from gabriella so could you use this uh to pay for a short course on production or mixing for example i think you probably could yeah absolutely uh, so if you're, yeah, or someone, maybe it's, there's a create uh, a practitioner that, you know, uh, that, that you may be able to give you some one-to-ones and you can actually pay them to kind of just give you some kind of tailored training as well. And again, what you, you'd probably try and earmark those things, but yes, you can absolutely pay for those sort of things. Uh, it kind of work. Th um, I think someone I know recently used it so they could go to a, I can't remember it was some kind of workshop but in like uh in another country so it was like you know they earmarked it and said i'm looking i think this would be really clear great to, for me to develop it's over here it'll cost this much so yeah highlighting those so if you're if there's a course in mixing or production uh that you're looking to do that's you know that costs, costs a bit of money then um uh I would then put that within that within your application. So you're actually showing what you're going to spend the money on. So it's, you know, that 40%, it's like, it's not just, I'm going to have 40% and I'll do what I want. It's like, I'm going to engage the, these, these are the things I'm going to use my money for. Now they aren't going to pay for a whole course and they, you know, and they shouldn't, I don't think they're not keen for you to use to just to pay for, pay for one course. I think they're, but I think they are happy for you to engage in in certain things i don't again worth checking criteria they are quite clear on those things they're quite strict about those things as well um i hope that answers your question so yeah i really recommend dycps they're dead good 
Um, uh, that is my really well thought out opinion. They're dead good. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I know people have really benefited from them. Um, uh, so would you uh, would you be more like so? Gab, another question from Gabrielle. These are really good questions, by the way. I'm really enjoying getting them. Would Would you be more likely to uh, to get it if you plan to use those skills for a specific project, like learning to mix to produce uh, your next EP for yourself? For example, I think you would. I think if you could definitely highlight why you're going to what those skills are going to be used for. So, for example, for Rick, it was about. I'm going to use this, I'm going to learn these skills and I'm going to then use them for my live, you know, live and recorded projects. And he, you know, so he got, he got the money because, you know, he was able to kind of say what, what the outcomes. And again, you know, that's, they love, funders love seeing outcomes. They shows that you've got a clear idea so yeah absolutely uh cool any further questions on dycps before i before i move on cool no problem at all gabriel really thank you i really appreciate i really like getting questions in they make things much more fun so please don't be afraid to ask the what about what is how come i you know do you think they're all good they're great good questions to get all right uh so arts council england there sorry i keep forgetting to do that previously funded artists and projects are publicly available on our website so you can see who gets funded what kind of projects get funded and you can filter them by arts or regions uh it says grantham that's uh it's, it's not grantham it's grantium uh so uh so they use what a portal called grant the grantium funding port portal which is just oh god grantium it's not, not the just the front page is terrible it's really like you know for a company and a, an organization that is sort of desperate to engage in in, in access and it's really trying to kind of ha you know like really trying to champion access it's so deeply inaccessible i should be careful really because i'm saying this on the, you know a public platform and uh and i'm currently trying to get funded i love you arts council england you're great give me my money <laughs> <laughs> but for God's sake, sort out your your accessibility. You um you set up your account and they approve you fill all the criteria to to apply for money from them. Um, yeah, and then you apply through the Grantium portal, uh, and which um, you end up spending an enormous amount, and terrifying amount of time on. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, and thank you for call. Yeah, I should call them out on accessibility. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I am. Like I'm someone who has a degree, and I, you know, I teach, and I, you know, I read quite a lot, and I find, I find their, uh, their website, particularly the granting part of it, deeply overwhelming, and maybe that's a, maybe they're just trying to put people off, but you know, it's not really great for the old accessibility. Um, right, uh, I will move on. So local and regional, so it's a list of sort of different local and regional development partners. So Launch Pad, Come Play With Me, Opera North, South Asian Arts, Huddersfield Contemporary Music Festival, Higher Rhythm in Doncaster, well, the Warren and Hill. These are all kind of what we call regional development agencies and these um, and, and talent development agencies. So these are kind of organizations that are looking to foster and, and um, uh, engage and support and nurture talent within their, their areas. Uh, and that might be through uh, funding, that might be through uh, mentoring, that might be through uh, su actual sort of supporting, uh, um, supporting releases, um, 
or it might be a combination of all of those things. Um, uh, and each of them kind of, if you're from any of these areas, it's really worth looking at their websites and seeing what they can offer um, because they all have something to offer. And they all have really good people working for them. You know, and there's a lot of, a lot of the people there. So I should have put Leeds. That's obviously Leeds, West Yorkshire, next to the launch pad. Um, uh, but I figure you guys all know that. And, you know, the yeah, the people who work for those organisations are brilliant. So, like, you know, I know who runs Comply With Me and they are an excellent human being. I know, uh, and I know loads of some of the other people like Tony and, and Danny, who are, I just, you know, adore. Um, uh, and, you know, like, not just as as practitioners and as creatives but also you know or sort of people who are supporting creative engagement they are people that i really admire as people as well i think they're really great you know launchpad you know like even like kieran who is who works sort of tirelessly behind the scenes uh for uh for launchpad he's, he's an excellent human being uh i had the pleasure of teaching him at, at least beckett so i'm really you know and sort of developed see watching his his sort of skills develop uh, is amazing and it's run by whiskers who's obviously just just got loads of provenance and is a supreme human being and is you know like one of the champions of local music so you know we're really lucky in this area to have people who really care about about kind of local music and mu local music engagement um uh, and and the they're worth engaging with these if you're sort of looking particularly when you're an individual artist it's really difficult you know like or you're in a band sometimes you can feel lost amongst everything and just having some touchstones that you can you can connect with that is a really you can ask advice or look at look for for resources um who may be offer be able to offer you some mentoring or some support the these you know invaluable um uh, they also, you know, they also offer funding pots as well. So I know, for example, Launch uh, 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 Launchpad obviously just had a round of funding and supported a bunch of artists. Can play with me, um, uh, offer funding and support for different projects, particularly for people in the LGBTQ um, uh, community, uh, which is brilliant. And so, so again, supporting kind of underrepresented um, uh, people within the music industry. So it's really the. Um, uh, and um, uh, I'm I'm a massively supportive of that. I think like that, you know. I think there's there's some grumblings uh, from typically from middle aged white people about kind of how how that is. I am not one of those people. I think uh, I have been perfectly fine and never get perfectly fine because I'm a white middle class man. And uh, it is important that kind of. Uh, people who aren't just me aren't uh, uh, are spotted and it's also worth mentioning that absolutely they are sporting people on merit as well like it's not just tick boxing that you know some some brilliant artists are getting supported because they're brilliant artists and and i know some of the artists who've been supported and some of them come from underrepresented communities some of them don't and so you know uh it, we're, we're really lucky to live in a really wonderful and diverse area and city and i think that needs representing within uh within uh within our um talent development partners i'm sorry that was that's a personal uh i think but i'm sure it'll be supported by uh, by uh, my my colleagues so yeah so it's worth looking at these different uh, with you're from these different areas about what they may be able to offer you and support you in um so local and um, other kind of local and regional initiatives so saving grace push patterns long division wakefield so that's obviously a festival sable radio as it says young folks uh so there's and again these all do different things but for producing hub uh south uh sorry women's yorkshire uh a yorkshire women's sound network which is excellent uh project and i know some of the people who kind of are involved in that and they're just fantastic um and committed and and also astonishingly talented people um so the, uh i think essentially sometimes again this thing that we sometimes feel creatively that we're in sort of an island and we're not we are part of a wider community and networks and it is worth reaching out to these some of these projects and finding out about them because they might be able to offer you a sense of community and a sense of engagement and a sense that you're not just sort of struggling alone in a kind of mass ocean of of music that actually there is kind of collectives and organizations and when you feel part of something i think 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 you feel engendered and i think you you feel uh i think 
um, empowered. And I think that's really important uh, to feel that um, because ultimately you'll feel listened to. Uh, and uh, that's obviously one of the big issues within music is that sometimes you feel like you're screaming into the void and no one's hearing you. And so if you have sort of those support next world, networks around you and you feel like you're part of a wider thing that can definitely help with that um and that and it stays off the extension thread and that can happen so look so many local uh authorities have so what i mean by that is uh um so i mentioned tracy Brabens, uh mayor of west yorkshire funding but there's also uh, within kind of re funding within regions and cities. So uh, Leeds um, has uh, has its own kind of creative part. It used to be called Leeds Inspired. I think they've just renamed it though. And I can't remember what the name is. It's terrible of me. But um, so Leeds City Council still fund arts projects. And I'm hoping, and I'm really proud that Leeds hung on to that. That Leeds, uh, you know, some, of the, some cities uh, cut all arts funding. So uh, during the austerity years although you know not necessarily over yet but um uh so uh areas like newcastle cut all their arts funding and i understand why they are trying to kind of keep the lights on um and you know uh and city councils have suffered from massive underfunding um and regional councils and and kind of but we are there are some cities that have held on to their uh, commitment to, to funding the arts and creativity with an understanding about the impact they have on their cities and you know Hull have Hull massively benefited from from city of culture Bradford our city of culture 2025 and Leeds is just a very Le Leeds has uh, a very very vibrant um uh uh kind of cultural infrastructure and you know uh Leeds City Council obviously support things like Not Light Night and many other projects as well and are um, uh, and are, are kind of committed to funding those kind of things that are still engaging communities and wider communities, um, despite their big kind of push for kind of cuts. And uh, so, you know, we, and they are funds that are available to creatives to to um, to engage. And so, um, and again, they tend to support projects um, uh, and maybe sort of things that have a wider cultural reach. So if you're doing wanting to maybe performances or again run workshops with a performance element, they that's the kind of thing they're likely to fund because anything that's going to kind of enrich the community and have you know uh, uh, that they're the they're the, again they have their own criteria. Again, because they're public funded and particularly because they're coming out of council money, particularly the Leeds one, it's it's quite involved for quite for not a lot of money it can be quite a yeah quite a dense application process but it's because they have to be seen to do due diligence when they're giving out public money and that has to be sort of bear in mind again wakefield as well wakefield um you know city council are, are, are sort of trying to kind of push the creative community obviously with the rival to yard north as well that sort of so that kind of like the the idea that wakefield is kind of he's trying to kind of grow its cultural stock which is great and can only improve the area so I just a list of things uh, I put together um, before you apply for funding and like it was just sort of something I put together um, when I was thinking about it. So uh, funding pots can change and refocus. So make sure that you know uh, what you're applying for. So sometimes you uh, you can kind of look at a project six months earlier and think I'll apply for that and start the application process. But then that that pot has either disappeared or it's been they've refocused the nature of the funding or what it's doing so make sure you know exactly what you're funding for uh what, what you're applying for that's really important so really know like what you're applying for and 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 most importantly why you are applying for that funding what are you why why would you benefit from getting that funding um so make it, you know, it's about being specific to your project. It's like, and so, and what is, why, why your project above lots of other projects, they'll be going for that, that funding. So it's making sure, so having a real understanding of why that funding is important to you and why it would benefit you. Um, Again, really obvious, but check you're eligible. Like make sure you're checking those eligibility 
uh, processes. It, it might, you know, it's, you know, go and watch and read application guides, maybe even reach out to the funders, as mentioned before, and try and speak to them about why, um, uh, about kind of what they're looking for, whether or not it's likely they're going to be, uh, um, I had an idea for a project that I was looking to get funded and I spoke to kind of a funding body and they were like, we not sure we'd have we'd fund this kind of project which is great because it basically meant that i didn't have to go through the pain of applying for funding when uh when that when that wasn't open to me from that organization so it is you know it's really worth keep checking on that um to, so you um you uh, i mentioned this before and you obviously with uh with the question that was asked um which is a really good one is that you may be eligible for access support to help you through the application process so some uh some funding bodies offer support arts counseling and absolutely do and they will pay for someone uh to help you uh with with support and they have they have people who are really good at that as well and like understand and they will they hopefully give you someone who understands the arts process. So a friend of mine who's a brilliant creative practitioner also helps people with access and gets paid by Arts Council England. So which is great for them because obviously it's a bit more money. But um, but they they but because they apply funding all the time, they have an understanding of of how the application process works and therefore can really support you on in that, which is great. Um. If you can get someone to read through your application and give you feedback, particularly someone who's been through maybe that process. I'm really lucky because my wife uh, applies for funding all the time and it and it has been on a bit of a lucky streak to be honest. I say lucky, she's also because she's brilliant. Like she's an incredibly talented human being who's put together some brilliant projects, but she has been on a really good hot streak at the moment. So, uh, you know, I'm lucky enough to have someone who can read through applications and and give me really good, insightful feedback. And if you know someone who has had been successful at funding application, it is really worth putting it in front of them and um, asking them they'll, they'll they'll give it a read. Um, and maybe even just you know like, and if it's not someone you have, someone maybe just someone who who kind of does this make sense, you know? And that might be just some portions of it, whether or not it's like the narrative of what you're trying to what you're trying to uh, do. Um, I'll get to your question in a minute. Um, if you can, uh, no, I've read that. Be aware of deadlines; they are non-negotiable. So if you miss a deadline for like PPL, accelerate, or whatever, they are not gonna. They aren't gonna go. Oh, it's okay. You're a couple of days late. They are pretty hard with deadlines, and they have to be because they get a lot of applications. So they are, they they are pretty much like hard deadlines. They are not a like soft deadline at all. They they do not accept applications after the after after the uh, the closing date. So make sure you're hitting those. Um. Be patient. Uh, decisions can take a while. Sometimes they can be extended for whatever reason. That might be, I don't know, the illness or whatever, or, you know, um, timings, whatever it might be. There may be reasons why um, application processes get held up, which can be really frustrating and uh, really, uh, obviously, like, can put you on tenor hooks. But, um, uh, um, and which kind of leads me to my next point, which is really kind of sounds really like um like defeatist, but be prepared to fail, like like and and resubmit, because just because you turn down doesn't mean it's a hard no forever. It's what you what are you hoping for, and if you can, is you get as much feedback as you can from the organisation about why your application was unsuccessful and act on that. Don't just see it as like, well, I don't agree and not do it. They are telling you why you didn't get the money. So act on those those suggestions. Um uh and I suppose be prepared to fail is because I think if you're like eggs all eggs in one basket and I need this more than anything else, uh then and you don't get funded, it can be crushing. And you don't want to be crushed. You kind of one of the things you have to do within the music industry is develop a thick skin the creative industry practice and that sounds really like i'm not saying that you shouldn't be vulnerable and i'm you know someone who is i think wears the heart on the sleeve and is not someone who's like you know nothing can hurt me i am you know i'm i'm a big emotional human being and i you know and i wear my emotions very openly i'm not and i'm not someone who is necessarily sort of like a robust human being like i don't you know but i am when it comes to my when it comes to 
uh, rejection and sort of uh, the answer of no, I, I you I've got used to it, and I'm and I don't I don't really get disheartened by it. I just okay, no. What was the reason for the no? Okay, let's act on that and redo it again. And if if I haven't got a bur burning desire to act on it, so I put an application in about probably five six years ago for a project. And I liked the idea of the project and I got a no. And I realized that I wasn't like, I didn't have a burning desire to do it. And uh, which kind of struck me that actually I wasn't prepared to re go through the process of resubmitting. And I didn't, I just, I just decided to can it and not bother because I didn't have, I, well, I got the no and I was like, uh, when you know sometimes you know that'll tell you everything you need to know but um having a big fat no and it when it is something you really care about it can be really hard but i think it's sometimes going okay but it's not a no forever most of these a lot of these funding pots have have um have rounds so they'll be open multiple times a year some of them like arts council england are constantly open and are receiving funding funding applications all the time so you can know and we were so i got a no for my last project for the one that i'm my musical that i'm funding at the moment kind of funding at the moment and we got a no for that and uh we got it r right at the beginning of september and what was great is that me and the two other people I'm kind of working with, we scrambled, we got it all together and we got it back in. And we, within two and a half weeks, we acted on their, their advice. We still, we went through the application, we tightened it up. We looked at expanding on certain areas um, and we resubmitted and we're, and we're waiting again. So it's kind of been pragmatic uh, and pragmatism is really important within creativity. It's not very cool. But, oh yeah, pragmatism is the least cool thing in music ever. See Paul, Paul McCartney for details. Um, pragmatism is uh, is we uh, in music we always have to everything has to look like ah oh, I just did it and it was just happened and it's like you just didn't really plan it. You've got to look like you never planned it and it was just it just kind of came because you're that cool and talented. But the truth is, pragmatism is the thing that kind of works, which is essentially you you make a plan and you work to it and you keep going and actually it's a uh, and if you can make it look effortless, well, well done. I'm not sure I can do that. Um, but being pragmatic about stuff is dead important. Just going, okay, right, okay. What, well, what's next? How do we move on? We've got to keep going. And that kind of level pragmatism will see you, see you good. Um, uh, and uh, I think we'll drive you forward as well. So yeah, just being kind of like, it's all right. Like if you are expecting a yes on your first time round with an application and you've put all your eggs in that basket, that's a massive risk. And 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 I wouldn't recommend it um i would recommend going i hope i get it i really want to get it but if i don't then what's plan b and that be, might be resubmitting might be looking at the funding applications um and you know you don't have to just go for one at a time you can look, apply for multiple funding pots at the same time you know which is kind of spread betting but you know it can work and sometimes you get two or three you know I, my wife was lucky enough to get kind of two at the same time which was insane like, like like honestly everyone was like really but yeah they did uh again it's because they're brilliant um but you know and they but they did strong applications which had a real understanding of what the project was um is there any